The setting of the magnificent and picturesque Whitby Abbey has been the source of inspiration and art for hundreds of years. The Abbey's headland has marked the scene of a settlement for over a thousand years. However, the most famous legacy of Whitby Abbey and its surroundings is linked to the lore of one of literature's most famous gothic horror figures. In a previous video, we looked at the history behind the inspiring monastic building. However, today we present a slightly different video. Today we're looking at a more particular part of Whitby Abbey and how specifically it inspired Bram Stoker to write possibly the most important gothic novel ever. Today we explore Whitby Abbey and how it inspired Dracula. If you do enjoy these videos, please support the channel by subscribing. At the end of July in 1890, Bram Stoker would arrive at Mrs. Veazey's guest house at 6 Royal Crescent in the seaside town of Whitby. At the time, he was a business manager and personal assistant of the actor, Henry Irving, and had just completed a gruelling tour of Scotland. Stoker had begun to write novels whilst working as a manager and as the secretary and director of London's Lyceum Theatre. It would be Irving who would recommend a visit to Whitby where he had once run a circus and said that it would be a nice place for Stoker to visit. Throughout the 1880s and 1890s, many authors such as Rudyard Kipling, Robert Louis Stevenson and H.G. Wells had written many stories in which fantastic beasts and creatures threatened the British Empire. A genre of invasion literature was becoming ever popular and Stoker seemed to become intrigued by this flourishing genre. Previously, he had written novels with his characters and settings based upon his native island. He was working at the time on a new story, which would be set in Styria in Austria. Before writing Dracula, Stoker spent seven years researching European folklore and stories of vampires, being influenced by Emily Gerard's 1885 essay titled Transylvanian Superstitions. This work contained content about a vampire myth. From 1890 to 1897, Stoker was a member of the London Library. Interestingly, markings in Sabine Baring Gold's Book of Werewolves and Charles Bonner's Transylvania have been attributed inside the books to Stoker and his research. In the summer of 1890, Stoker whilst visiting the coastal town of Whitby would enter the subscription library in Whitby. He requested a book with a specific title. The Accounts and Principalities of Wallachia and Moldavia, written by William Wilkinson. This book allegedly was so rare that the library didn't make it known that they possessed it, and only access was granted to those who specifically asked for it. Patrons were then only given the title whilst under the watchful eye of the librarian. Wilkinson had written about his experiences of a British consul in these territories in now modern day Romania. Inside this history, Wilkinson mentioned a 15th century prince called Vlad Tepes. Vlad Tepes, or Vlad the Third Dracula, or Vlad the Impaler, was one of the most important rulers of Wallachian history, and was considered a national hero in Romania. Stoker would learn about a bloodthirsty tyrant of Wallachia whose favoured method of execution would be impalement. This would be a cruel way to torment his enemies and deter them, whilst instilling a huge amount of fear. Vlad the Impaler was said to have killed between 40,000 to 100,000 European civilians via the brutal impaling method. Vlad would remain a folk hero in the Romanian region for his efforts too against encroachment from the Ottoman Empire. There is no solid evidence in the novel that Count Dracula inside Stoker's novel was modelled on Vlad the Impaler. However, it is believed that Stoker only borrowed the name along with scraps of miscellaneous information about Romanian history. While staying in Whitby, Stoker would have heard about a shipwreck, which occurred five years earlier. This shipwreck involved a vessel called the Dimitri, which sailed from Narva. This ship ran aground on Tate Hill Sands, below the East Cliff, and was carrying a cargo of silver sand. Inside the novel Dracula, the ship would then feature a slightly different name, known as the Demeter. The ship would carry Dracula to Whitby with a cargo of silver sand and boxes of earth. The boxes of earth needed to replenish the count. Whilst investigating the damaged ship, rescue workers reportedly saw a large black dog escaping from the hull of the ship, which ran up the 199 steps from Tate Sands Beach to the graveyard of St Mary's Church. Stoker would also then find out about the Northern English folklore 
and the mythical monstrous black dog known as the Barghest. This mythical beast allegedly has been spotted in Yorkshire many times over a few hundred years. This mythical creature would shriek a high-pitched howl which would indicate imminent death to anyone who heard it. Inside the novel Dracula, this beast would run up the steps to the church, marking Dracula's landing in England. The Abbey of Whitby is a ruin of a once great Benedictine monastery which dates back to the 11th century. The medieval abbey stands on the site of a much earlier monastery founded in the 7th century by Anglian princess Hild, who became the first abbess of Whitby. Inside the novel, Stoke has a character of Mina Murray described the abbey as a most noble ruin of immense size, full of beautiful and romantic bits. Next to the abbey is the aforementioned St Mary's Church. Stoke would have seen how time and weathering would have affected the gravestones in the eerie churchyard, and how some of them stood teetering over the eroding cliff. Some of the headstones stood, with the graves empty, marking sailors' graves whose bodies had been lost on voyages. Stoke would write down some of these inscriptions on the gravestones, including the name Swales, which was the name used for Dracula's first victim in Whitby. Stoker could have even taken inspiration from the famous Whitby Jet, the semi-precious stone used in mourning jewellery, which originates from the local area. Although Bram Stoker would have spent around six years on his novel before it was published, much of this time would be spent researching life in Transylvania and building up the dramatic scenes that do not take place in Whitby. What is certain though is the inspiration that Whitby had upon the author. Its picturesque and spooky abbey ruins that overlook the harbour is intertwined with local lore and legend, along with myths and history from Eastern Europe. There is much to be said about Dracula's links to Whitby, however today it still draws in hundreds of thousands of visitors and tourists every year, thirsty to get their teeth into the story of literature's most famous vampire. Thank you for watching The Untold Past. To support the channel, please subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching.